or relief of material miseries. So if you have material problems like some kind of disease or some kind of situation in your life that you need to resolve, chant Vishnu Sahasranam every day and resolve it. Especially if you follow the directions huh, to rise early before dawn, take bath, then do Achaman and Tilak and all that, and Nyasa, breathing to stabilize the mind, and then chant Vishnu Sahasranam very nicely, then it's very easy to get the material benefits that you need to do your uh, spiritual service. This is not a bad thing, but of course, like anything, it can be misused. So my counsel is to, uh, yes, to take advantage of these Vedic facilities to get the material things that we need to support our spiritual service. But don't get hung up on them. Don't get attached to them. That's the key. Huh? <clears throat> Always remain a little detached, a little neutral. Realize that this is coming from Krishna. So if Krishna wants, he can take it anytime he wants. It actually belongs to Krishna. It's Krishna's property. It's not my property. So if Krishna gives something, then he's giving it because he thinks it's going to benefit me. And when it's time, he's going to take it away too. So I can't be attached. I can't be uh, hung up on this. I have to be willing to give it up at any moment. If it gets in the way of my spiritual advancement, then it's time for it to go. And we have to be willing to walk away. I was talking about this last night, about achieving our long-term goals and our dreams. That we have to be willing to give up the security of the known and we have to be willing to walk away into the unknown. Otherwise, how are things going to change? How are things going to advance? Huh? Especially if we're suffering. Especially if our situation is uncomfortable. Huh? If we know there's a problem already. How is it going to change if we remain attached to the status quo? It can't change because we're resisting the change. So the change will either have to come by force or we'll have to remain in the same old rut. Just like if I hadn't given up any, everything and gone to Hawaii and just chanted 64 rounds, who knows where we would be today. Huh? I mean, yeah, you know, sure, I had, I had lost my contract and like that, but I could have found another one. You know, I have good skills. So it wasn't like it was the end of my job or, you know, like I was unemployed, you know. Uh, I was deliberately unemployed. <laughs> So, I took the chance, threw everything into my truck, drove all the way to California from Florida, again. Mm -hmm. Again. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. And all, all across the U.S., you know. And uh, put everything on a boat, flew up to this island where I had never been before, camped out in this lonely place, and just chanted. Just took complete shelter of the holy name. And it really paid off, paid off big. <laughs> if I hadn't taken that gamble, then who knows what would have happened? I could have stayed in South Florida puttering around and, you know, just making money and stuff for years. I could still be there now, who knows? I wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be anywhere. We'd just be right where I was back in 2000, which was not a very uh, satisfying place. So you have to take the risk. The more risk you take for Krishna, the more he rewards it. That's been my experience. Like I gave up everything and went to the West Coast in uh, 1967. And the result was I met the devotees and met Prabhupada. Uh, like I gave up everything in 1975 and went to India. Uh, with no money, no guarantees, no security, no nothing. And I got to serve Srila Prabhupada. And I got to know his sister. So many good things came out of that. Every time I've taken a big risk
for the sake of Krishna, then really good things, really wonderful things have come out of it. Huh? Just like Connor came here and, and uh, Florian, all the way from Europe, mm. huh? to live with some madman in the jungle. <laughs> with no travel insurance. <laughs> no, no insurance. And no school degree. No insurance and no degree. Oh my God. Yeah. What are you going to do for me? <laughs> <laughs> so, is it working out okay so far? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Everybody's happy. So <laughs> just see, Krishna protects his devotees. And that's the mood of that form of Lord Narsimha. So uh, we're going to keep our little lion around for a long time. <laughs> um, what have I asked? What is Gnyas? What is who? Gnyas. Uh, oh, yeah, names is crazy. Is it from pranayama? Oh, 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 yeah, it's pranayama. Oh, okay. Um, after you do your uh, uh, tilak and achama, then it's called nyasa. N Y A S A. Oh, it's good. Nyasa. With two long A's. Huh? Two long A's. Nyasa. Is it spelled with two long A's or is it with the, how do you call it, uh, the, the line? Macron. 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 Is that what it's called, Macron? Yeah. Wow. Definitions, definitions. We, we call it in Irish, we call it a fada. A who? A fada. A fada? Yeah, you put a, a, a stroke over the A, it goes ah. Yeah, a fada. long A. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, what is it? Macron. A Macron. Yeah. Macron is the long mark. So it's called Nyasa. And the way you perform Nyasa is you have these three fingers. This one goes on the bridge of the nose, and then the thumb and middle finger go on the nostrils on either side. And so you use the finger to close one nostril and breathe in, then close the other nostril and breathe out. Then breathe in again, then reverse and breathe out. Huh? Everybody's trying it. <laughs> <laughs> All over the world so <laughs> What are you doing to your nose? Okay, so I'll go over that again. You take the, the three fingers like this. Huh? And then like breathe in through the left nostril, then close the left nostril, open the right nostril, and breathe out through the right nostril, then leaving the right nostril open, breathe in again, then close the right nostril, open the left nostril, breathe out, and so on. How many goes? So it feels good. Hmm. What, what you're doing is, you're harmonizing or uh, matching the flow of energy in the left and right spinal channels. Mm -hmm. The Ida and Pingala. Mm -hmm. So that the two hemispheres of the brain are in balance. Left and right brains. Because sometimes in the morning when you wake up, one side here does not work. It's like... Yeah, you got... <laughs> It's <laughs> really <hard>. morning face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this eye is over here. <laughs> Your ears are crooked. You know. So this gets everything balanced, and then you're, you can ready to concentrate on your mantra. So it's usually done after tilak and achama, then nyasa then chanting your mantras, whatever they are. If you have second initiation, if you have Gayatri initiation, you chant your Gayatri mantra after that, and then you chant your Japa. Any other questions? Well, they want to know how much time exactly. Oh, come on. It's until you feel balanced, until you feel wide awake and mentally balanced.
Exactly, when is that energy? <laughs> but how do you know when you feel balanced? Oh, you Stand up and spin around. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know when you're satisfied after you eat a full meal? Mm -hmm. uh, you just know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Oh, uh, the tone's not quite mm -hmm. right. Give me another piece of the. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Everybody happy now? Good. Good. Leave them laughing, huh? Yeah.